Well, good morning. Once again, my assistant bringing the snowman up on the table for us. Thank you, Ian. Um, I hope, I'm just going to show them real quick because I think you guys are a little bit parallel to it. Hannah and Grace and Emily, so you can have a little quick look. Um, in case you haven't been able to track along with us, we're looking at different personalities in the Bible, and we're looking for ways that maybe we are kind of like that person and what's to learn from them and maybe what's to be a little bit cautious about or what we can avoid if possible. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, uh, Gemma, my helper this morning, just noticed, she said, oh, yeah, they're all different shapes, and even their buttons are the same shape. I don't know if you guys have been noticing that little detail, but there you go. We'll point it out for you. Um, <clears throat> so our, our snowman, our Bible character today is Thomas. My grandmother was born and named Mabel. Okay. And <clears throat> she did not like her name. She didn't like her name because there was a skipping rope rhyme that went, Mabel, Mabel, set the table. And she got told that all the time. Mabel, Mabel, set the table. She was a very strong woman. And when she became an adult, she officially changed her name. She gave it a southern flair and she called herself Mabel because she didn't like that little rhyme. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes there are things attached to a name. Sometimes they're positive. Most of the time they're kind of negative if you've heard them before. And I just thought of a couple. Um... <clears throat> raising Cain, if you've heard that phrase before, I don't know. Raising Cain, and that's not like the cane you use, it's C-A-I-N, the person. And if someone is raising Cain, it's they're causing trouble, because Rain, Rain, Cain did a little bit of that, so we can read about him another time. Another name is Pollyanna. Have you heard that one? Don't be a Pollyanna, and that's someone who's maybe overly cheerful, and overly positive about something, maybe not dealing in reality, and they'll say, she's such a Pollyanna. Well, this morning, our guy, Thomas, has a phrase attached to his name, and you've probably heard it. People will say, don't be a doubting Thomas, or she's a doubting Thomas. So Thomas kind of got labeled with this a little bit unfairly, I think, but, um, I mean, because there were other really good parts of what we see of him in the Bible, and it wasn't just that one time. And maybe we'll even be able to sort of understand him a little bit better when we look at, in the Gospel of John, he wrote a little bit more about Thomas than the other Gospels did. He was one of the disciples, and um, what we're going to see about Thomas is that he liked to watch and listen. So remember, you're going to kind of look to see if maybe this sounds a little bit like you. And Thomas needed to understand how things work. That was what he was like. So one of the times that we have Thomas actually quoted in the Bible is when Jesus says, I'm going back to heaven, going to build, uh, I'm going to make a place for you there. I'm going to my father's house and my father's house are many rooms and I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to take you with me. And Jesus says, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Well, there stood Thomas. He was listening and he needed to understand. And he said, uh, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? That was a good question. He wasn't doubting Jesus in that moment. He... Um, he was just saying the obvious. There were so many times when Jesus would tell his disciples something, they didn't understand what he meant. They didn't understand what he was saying because it was really new stuff. And Thomas just said, well, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And the answer to that from Jesus is one of the really favorite verses of a lot of people because Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. So we can thank Thomas for getting that answer recorded because it's, um, it's a favorite of quite a few people, including me. Well, then, as you know, Jesus was crucified, so he died, and he was buried, and the disciples were really sad. 
they did not think he was coming back to life, okay? Even though he'd given them hints, they didn't understand what he was saying. And so the disciples were really discouraged. They'd been following him and they didn't understand how he could die and then what were they supposed to do? Well, they were gathered together, all of them except Thomas, or at least Thomas was one of the two that wasn't with them. And I'm wondering if Thomas was off thinking by himself because a person with this personality often likes to be alone and think about things on their own. And Jesus appeared to the disciples and then they saw Thomas and they said, he's alive, we saw Jesus. And this is where Thomas gets his little um, moniker, Doubting Thomas, because he said, unless I see the prints in his hands, the nail prints, and I can touch them, and I can put my hand in his side, I don't believe it. And some of us can sort of understand that, right? It was pretty crazy to think somebody who they had seen die was alive again, just three days later, or this may have been a few days after that, that he appeared to them. So that's why people say he's a doubting Thomas. But I love the end of that, because if you can picture this, the disciples are in a room, the door's closed, Thomas is with them, and Jesus walks through the wall and appears to them. Can you imagine? If we had all these doors shut and Jesus came in, <laughs> it would be pretty freaky, wouldn't it? And Jesus says to Thomas, Thomas, put your hands in the nail prints of my hands and put your hand through my side, to, in the scar on my side, and then you will believe and we don't know for sure if Thomas did it. It doesn't say that he did. But what he did say is, my Lord and my God. So he believed. Okay? So I think that's such a, a redeeming thing for Thomas. He, he wasn't a bad person because he had to study things. He had to think about them before he would agree. That's okay. That's a good thing. And I have a little scenario that I you know, just drew up in my mind that maybe would be what would happen with kids. Let's say you're hanging out with your friends and they say, I know what we should do. Let's build a tree house. And some of the other kids are getting excited about it. Yeah, let's have a tree house. That'd be so cool. And maybe you're sitting there and you're quiet and you're thinking. And maybe you have a friend who says, don't you want to do this? What's wrong? Don't you want to be excited with us? But what you're doing if you have a personality that listens and watches and has to understand how things work, maybe you're looking at the trees that they're pointing at and thinking, okay, that one's too high. If we built the tree house up there and we fell, probably break an arm. That one has a dead limb. That's probably not a good tree to use. <laughs> probably want to use that tree. And then you hear them saying, oh yeah, we'll get some wood. I've got some wood at my house. And maybe you're thinking, we're going to have to cut that wood probably going to need a saw. We're probably going to need a parent or somebody to help us because we're not going to be allowed to use a saw. And then you hear them say, I oh, will put a roof on it. And then you're thinking, oh, well, that means walls. Walls are pretty tricky, a little bit harder than a platform. So, so if this is you and you're thinking, yeah, that's what I do. When, when I see an idea or hear an idea, I have to think through how is it going to work? And you know what I'm here to say to you? We need you. We need you to think through that because I'd probably be one of those people going, that's a great idea, let's do it, fun. And then I need to hear from uh, the Thomas type personality who says, okay, let's think this through, make sure we've got it safe, make sure it makes sense and all those good things. So the thing you wanna watch for, if you're a personality like this, is that a personality like this will often choose to be alone. They like their own company. They like to read and study and think about things on their own, and that's okay too. But I just want to remind you that uh, sometimes you might need to push yourself to be with people, both for your good, but also for our good, because we need those thinkers to do that, to uh, show us the other side of things, okay? So that's Thomas. That's our snowman for this week. Thank you very much.